That's what we That'd be funny. The Veggie Tales meat sausage party. Oh, oh no! What is that sausage doing to their bun? <laughs> oh God, we're not like that. That's a couple of sins there. Next thing you know, they end up in a salad. Oh yeah. Oh, it Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's like Cartman's only fan. Ew, pause. Oh no. <laughs> Hell no. Cartman's <laughs> only fans is a place <laughs> saved for only the deepest, darkest pits of hell. That that sounds horrible. I'm sure it's a bunch of Nazis and and Hitler, and not, not Hitler. Hitler. Uh, Saddam Hussein. The midget Saddam Hussein from South Park. <laughs> oh, well. Let's see where we're going this evening. I do, yeah. too. I ain't even going front. I like the direction. Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the partners. Show with three friends, separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I'm along with. It's the other third of the partners, the Padawan here. Um, I'm thinking about drinking Grey Goose, and I'm alone. <laughs> Get fucked up. Drug fuck up. I can't even say the It's face. I'm here. I'm in the middle awesome. of the damn race, and I guarantee by the end of the public, fuck, we going to win. Yeah, we going to win. We going to win. We going to win, y'all. We well, welcome win. to the podcast, man. It's episode 114. We are back for another one. Please make we sure don't. you subscribe, share, uh, all them good things. And yeah, man, we up out there. We up in this bitch again this week. Uh, yeah, how y'all doing this week? I can't uh, complain at all. Well, I can. I'm broke. I got a car. In the- <laughs> boy. Boy, 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 boy. I understand your pain right now on that. Um, Yeah. I definitely get you there, brother. But we gonna make it. We gonna make hey, it. You heard him say he broke though. I mean, if anybody wanna throw him a cash out, you know, you know how to do it. Dollar sign partner tier one. You can see it at the bottom and how you how you can support it financially. Go ahead, throw the man a couple of dollars. Put something Let on that car. Right. <laughs> Let a nigga get a sandwich. <laughs> a chicken sandwich. Or at least a or at least a carrot, like the vegetables uh that face is representing this week. Um, I gotta go all the way to Virginia for a chicken sandwich. <laughs> Boy, that better be the best damn sandwich ever. Yeah, it come with pussy. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that nigga that drive two hours for a Wawa juice. I guarantee he'll drive eight hours for some puss. He ain't going no for Man, no chicken. It's really it's not about the sandwich, guys. It's all about the bun. Oh, it's about the sandwich. <laughs> it's about the sandwich. The one he gonna make. It's a sandwich. And I what like the buns that come with you, your bun, baby. The buns that come with the sandwich is awesome. Put that special sauce on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys. <laughs> hey, I am real glad Let's we would do the segue to something good from uh <laughs> Oh no, Seth yeah, bro. Bun. What nigga? I said something. I was trying to do the BLT theme song and then something you know at the end it'd be like on oh, the Sesame C button, but I guess that's the aftermath after the no, I'm gonna shut up. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go to the button. Onions on the Sesame C bun. She got that camel toe. They need to do like a um they need to do like uh like they did with Thanksgiving. Greens, hams, yams, potatoes. They didn't do that with the sesame seed buns. 
<laughs> you mean with the Big Mac song? Yeah, with the Big Mac song. That too, whatever we call it. <laughs> That's all that is. Two all beef patties, <laughs> special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on the sesame seed bun. They need to get her. Uh, what was the uh, what's the gospel singer that be singing that shit? They need to get her to sing it. What gospel singer be singing that shit, Pat? That be singing. Well, he, you think PC Wild has been on a McDonald's commercial? Nigga? No, no. Remember, you know, on Thanksgiving they be like they be they they be putting. Oh, you talking about? Oh, god damn! Mm-hmm. It, it ain't so damn, damn, Whatever the fuck. Oh, BB and CC. No, it's the lady who actually was preaching. She was she was preaching a sermon. She's also a gospel singer too, though. But she was preaching the sermon on Shirley something. Chisholm. No, it ain't Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm was like a teacher or something back in the day. Man, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, Shirley Chisholm was a Shirley teacher, you know? He's just naming black girls, black ladies. Oh, right, my He's throwing out names. He's just naming everybody. Shirley, they, 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 they right. Right. I'm throwing out something out there, bro. <laughs> Pamela James. No, oh, man. Uh, uh, the, the, the Loretta B- Scott King. Raiders, Lambs, Rams, Hogs, Dogs. That lady. That's all he talking about. That lady. Coretta Scott. No, man, no. Nigga, no. <laughs> ah, yeah. Damn, <Jesus>, Coretta. <laughs> Shit. Damn, Coretta. Erica Badu. Bernadette. Just, just name it, everybody. Chloe Bailey, <laughs> Chloe Harvey, <laughs> Young Miami, Glow <Glow-Rilla>. River, <laughs> Claire Hustle, Jen Zilla, Patricia Rashad, <laughs> China, oh, Maud, Maud. Oh, <laughs> shit. what? That was a hard face ass woman, wasn't it? The <laughs> author woman. That was a hard faced lady, boy. <laughs> Did you ever hear her sing her song about uh, black boys? <laughs> what the fuck you say? You ever hear her sing her song about black boys and how tasty they are? You got to hear Beyonce go into her song. <laughs> it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. And how tasty they are? I think she was into the black. And how tasty they are? I think hey, I think she was eating them up. Either that or she a cannibal. Hmm. Right. I don't, know how, I don't know how disturbed I should be. I just feel it's all the way around disturbing because it's be I all. Think was, I don't think she was digesting them. I think she was just eating them. About a person being tasty is kind of scary. Ain't that the lady from Golden Girls? Yes. Yes, it is. That is Dorothy. The tall one. <laughs> yeah. Maud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Before Golden Girl, she was Mar. <laughs> that was a hard ass name for a hard faced woman. She was the white Glorilla. I don't even put that on Glorilla like that, man. <laughs> oh boy, Glorilla is a hard faced little girl. Her eyes are really far away from each other, and her chin is really close to everything else. <laughs> yeah, it is besides How's that work, right? How's that work? You know, most time motherfucker got to wear face mask, medical shit. So motherfucker called my name. I'm looking at this person, and I'm not saying nothing because I don't know who without your face mask on. So I'm just seeing the bottom of your face for like the first time ever in life, and I'm just staring like I don't know who you are. <laughs> and then they call my name again, and I'm still staring like I ain't saying nothing because I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to look. I'm like, oh, it's you. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> I've never seen the bottom, bottom half of your face. <laughs> so, no, that's really do fuck. Don't be surprised at things like. That. And people, people forget that they have like, their own. So, like, they really don't don't realize that you don't know anything below their eyes. Mm-mm. Like, I ain't seen a lot. I don't know if you got a slim nose, fat nose, flat nose. I just see bridge and eyes and forehead. Yeah, I don't even know if that's yeah, a, was, I don't even know that's a real nose. So, you ever seen somebody take their mask off and it's a completely different face than what you yep. expected? All yep. the time. Almost every uh, single time. Because my imagination is always way <laughs> always way different. Because like I've told myself whole narratives about people <coughs> based off what I think they look like and then they take their mask off and be like, oh. 
Hmm. Well, scrap that. Yeah, I don't think that that narrative matches now. I guess that wasn't what you was up to. Uh-uh. You don't look that smart. All right, never mind. My bad. Then you missing? I tell you what. I te- I'm gonna tell you. I was about to say something about teeth, bro. I, there's a lot of people <laughs> hiding tooth problems up under the mask, yo. Like, like they take the mask off, and it like, and don't get me wrong. This coming from a nigga that has had gaps between his teeth his entire life. So I'm not saying my teeth are perfect. I'm just saying they I, not I, I, seeing under these masks. It's some Baraka mouth Mo- motherfuckers out here. Look like Melina on a fatality, just real razor sharp. Bear- a lot of motherfuckers have bad breath too. That too, and I always wonder how people sit in there, because like if I eat a bad meal or something, and I put my mask on, I can smell the bad meal. So I'm trying to figure out how you sit around with bad breath all day and don't don't know that. That don't hurt. Is it sense the smell bad or they used to it? If you used to. Your mouth smelling sour. That's a problem. Yeah, you might want to go to the, the doctors. Like the dental. You know, they used to a funk. That means you, you, you got that high school Mac mouth. High school what? Mac mouth. Oh. <laughs> he did have that, bro. That was it. And he was short, so it always would come right up under your nostril. <laughs> it was like the perfect angle to just smack the fuck out your shit. What the Turn fuck your is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad breath should be banned. Like, and I don't, I don't mean like shit that come from the inside. Like you got a stomach issue, and that's why you got bad breath. I get that, but I mean anything that's starting the mouth. Like, how hard is it to brush every day? Like, I feel like you could brush once a day every day. If you brush real good, like, you still shouldn't have no funky-ass fart mouth all the time. Like, you should still be all right. <clears throat> Much less if you're out here doing what they tell you to do and actually, like, like you know, brushing at least twice a day or, you know, brushing out their meal. Like, why is your breath funky? What is wrong with your mouth? What is wrong with the enzymes in your teeth and, and spit that just keep making it stink? Need to eat more fruits and vegetables or something. I don't understand how that'd be like that. And it'd be people just walk around with their mouth just on ass all day and don't and, and it's the same way motherfuckers out here don't wash their legs ever. I I've heard the feet, but the legs, yeah, the ass ankle up, you don't hit that. Yeah, you don't you don't hit that with the loofah. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard it the worst. I've heard, I've heard motherfuckers okay. say they don't, they, don't, they don't hit nothing but the hot spots, and they, ain't, they don't hit them every day. So they've monkey bath their entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised what I be reading. People that are lifelong hoe bathers. Um, I don't understand why. And the thing that's amazing, amazing to me in these situations, real color. That's not even your real color. Relationship. That's what that tells you. Relationships, and that they partner don't never know until they do some public shit and tell. Then you're totally that, disgusted. That what people are thinking is a tan line is really just dirt. You not mm-hmm. even your. And we got a. Well, you really like two, three shades lighter. Mm-hmm. That shit gone after a couple years, like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you walk around looking like a chimney sweep in the face. You walk around looking like 2010 <laughs> in the body. Uh, oh, chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim tree ass. <laughs> what the hang fuck? Around with, hang around with Miss Mary Poppins and shit. A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be. Super califragilistic expedialidocious. Yeah. It's funny oh, I can oh, pronounce it. Yeah, Next be a halitosis. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, that was a good one. That was a good one, yo. That was a good one. That was a good one. Quick, baby, you throw it. You you throw the oop. I'ma catch it. All right, I like that. That was a good. One. That boy good. That boy good. Well, speaking of good, it is episode one fourteen, and um, let's get into some shit, man. All right. 
Alright, I'm back. Alright, so uh for this good and fuckery, we're gonna go back to my hometown of Portland. Again. Again. Oh, I don't know what, what it is, but Missy Elliott is on a run. Like she just got nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Nice. And and when I was uh when they posted about it, I didn't know that was Missy Elliott. I can't even talk. Missy Elliott. All right, now I can talk again. Yep, yep. That's one of her songs too when she's speaking backwards. Whatever the fuck she be saying. Yo, she looks mad. Yeah. See Missy Elliott. She don't. Yeah, she is. She damn so... look, look like the carry mm-hmm. on the uh, screen. <laughs> she, she get anything? This is real. I think she was. Well, she sick at one point or some shit. Yeah, she was I sick for a, good, a couple of years actually, or whatever. But now nah, she made one hell of a comeback. God, like like she got her own street. You know what I'm saying? Um. She got another award too, not too long ago, and now she got um, she on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or whatever. And okay. if you go down Missy Elliott know. Boulevard, um, if you go down Missy Elliott Boulevard, they just uh, opened up Rivers Casino in Portsmouth. Now, uh, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, we'll see. But everybody's been telling me it's kind of nice in there, except for the motherfuckers that really like go to casinos and shit, like in Vegas and all that other shit. They be like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm cool. All right, let me ask you this. Since you're down there, they play, they play in this this um casino shit in different areas um of Virginia. And where they got the casino at? Is that a majority black area? Portsmouth is majority black, period. <laughs> I thought so. All right, so yeah, because they, they they were thinking of doing the same thing in Southside, Richmond. Now they're trying to come to campaign for the free casino to um Petersburg. They're making one in Norfolk too. That's why I'll I say they're clearing out a lot of the hood shit out there, though. It's a gift and a curse. It could be good revenue for Petersburg, and Lord knows Petersburg needs it. Damn right. However, it does exploit, like, the gambling addiction that a lot of people in the hood have already. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell and yeah, they do. You basically they just already- take from the lottery to the slot machine, but it's the same type of... All right, next, that's my... Follow up question off what you just said, bro. Now, with so many people gambling in the hood or in these majority black areas, or not even just black, majority minority areas, because you have a lot of Hispanic people that gamble as well on, on, on high note. Now, with a casino being placed in their areas, and most of their revenue now going to casinos, not going to the regular lottery, do you think the lottery? We'll see. Uh, 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 I'm not gonna say. It. Or you'll see a negative uh, correlation with lottery sales. No, nah, I think not, if anything it might increase. I, 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 would say, I would say maybe you might catch a quick dip, like the first weekend or something. But from what my like the way I look at it is like gambling be like drugs. It's like. You got a crack dealer in the neighborhood. You come in with a heroin dealer. The crack dealer might see a dip for a day, but after that, they both just going to be pumping as normal. Yeah. I see it being a situation like that where both of them just get fed off the other because it's just feeding. It's all feeding that same gambling addiction monster. Yeah, because people got their preference. Usually people that gamble are superstitious, you know what I'm saying? But then you got those gamblers, you know what I'm saying? They might win something at the lotto, then go play that shit at the casino. Or they may win some shit at the casino, buy a whole bunch of lotto tickets. Some That's shit like that. Smart. Right there. So I can see that. And then you already got the... Um, you already got the um, like in that week between, you might go to the casino every Saturday. That week in between, you still stopping at the gas station and shit along your day, so you still gonna be catching your scratch offs and all that shit. So, you know what might take a hit? The fucking um, the little uh gambling um, 
machines that be at gas stations now. You know they use. They be going. Yeah, the they gonna take a hit. No, it you, might not. I mean, it might be a little dip for a I second. Them for the local motherfuckers who don't have rail transportation. If him, you could walk up to the yeah. gas station and sit there all day and do that. If him, so I see that as like at the casino. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? Basically, because in a lot of gas stations around casinos and stuff, they have those machines in there. Even mm-hmm. any any same. gas station, like places I've been that have casinos, any gas station or like little convenience store, any in like a couple mile radius of the casino, they all have those type of machines in there. Mm-hmm. You and know, before the big boom of them going everywhere, it's just being there off GP. Ain't no casino in sight. Just come oh yeah, that too. I, uh, you yeah, know, because, you, pop up there, then. you know, you know. All of a sudden, these little um, casino machines be popping up in the gas stations. What if the companies that own the casinos are just placing them there as research? I doubt it, but I, it's not something that's like implausible. It's it's possible yeah. that it could happen. I just want to throw a conspiracy theory out there. It's damn sure it could happen. It's plausible because the games are very similar, if mm-hmm. not identical. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's plausible because all of that shit served it. Like anything that served the same function, it, it's it, it's always collusion that's possible. That's true. You know what I mean? Is- like in the, any industry, like once you get to a certain point of success, it's, it's almost guaranteed that at some point you're going to have to have some type of trust or monopoly that's built based off of relationships. <laughs> Like, oh, well, we doing the same thing. We about equal. We can either take each other out or we can just merge and just crush everybody and just make, make it look like we compete. Yeah, and yeah, it's just a simple fact that, like, that data is, like, the most valuable commodity right now. It's probably more, more important than money itself right now. I mean, you look no, at no. all of the big companies, they all are basically umbrella companies that have a bunch of shit that make you think that you buying from different people, but it's all the same people. Like mm-hmm. you buy sunglasses from this place, you think it's going here, but it's like all going back to the same place. You watch a movie, it's going back to the same studio. You watch it, you listen to a song, it's going like it. it it's like everything that's uh, that's but highly, highly consumed. It's one place they can buy it. They don't do that. Artcheckclothing.com. Check it out. Artcheckclothing.com. <laughs> that money just go to us. They just go right to us. Artcheckclothing.com. One one group. Just us three. Awesome club. Yes, Get your partner first. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? I'm going to stay right in Portsmouth pretty much. Uh, on the next one, oh, man. God dang, um, 22-year-old Arlisha Boykins of uh, Churchland High School. Um, yeah, she Any dressed up. Boykins? Uh, Any kin to Earl Boykins? I I don't. Within this uh, amount of information, I can't tell <laughs> to tell you the truth. But it's in Virginia, so hey. But um, yeah, she was fired for impersonating a thirteen-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. High school basketball coach in Virginia has been fired for impersonating a 13-year-old player in a game. This is all to be in a game. <clears throat> She's the assistant coach. How old? Person. Hmm? 22. How old? 22. Arle- yeah, it's just, that's some shit a 22-year-old would do. Ar- <clears throat> Arlisha Boykins, high school assistant coach on the Churchland Dr- Junior Varsity Girls Basketball Team in Portsmouth, Virginia, Lower Port. Uh, suited up for the truckers while a 13 year old student athlete was out of town at a, at a club basketball tournament parents of the girl told NBC affiliate Wavy 10 Wavy TV 10 but according to her Portsmouth Public Schools she is no longer an employee <laughs> oh, boy, not now shit <laughs> but this this comes straight out of a movie because I'm pretty sure there was well in that movie I, I think it was like a, a a dude playing a girl. And I think Rodney Dangerfield was in that shit. Oh 
You talking about ladybugs? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then it yeah, was, that's another... what it was called ladybugs. They were playing soccer. Yeah. Mm hmm. It was his um. It was his step up. I'm gonna say that's more plausible because at least the the kids in question were close in age. What world are we living in where a 22 year old thinks she looked 13? Oh no! If, if, if she got that growth, oh, if she got that growth disease, what grown? She got that growth disease. Let me ask this in a reverse way: What grown people are looking at a twenty-two-year-old and think that that's a thirteen-year-old? I, I can know. tell the difference. Now we all realize twenty-two ain't grown, so we got to realize what mental status we're dealing with too. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with a, we're dealing with a, 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 the biggest of the biggest of teenagers. Trying to be a young teenager again. So I mean, but you you're not a teenager. You're a 22 year old. That means you didn't have exactly. your plus exactly. 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 Again, my question. All right. So you're telling me that this sounds normal to y'all that people would think no. that a 22 year old looks 13? No, it's not normal. I don't know a 22 year old that looks 13. I know young looking 22 year olds. Mm -hmm. But when I say young looking, it's like you could pass for like 18. You might be about to graduate high school. Man, Not I don't know. 13, you're just entering high school. Not at 22. Disease. Not on a regular basis. Unless they Maybe got their young people disease. Play a 13, but not at 22. Man, like at 22, some shit done settled in. Your bones done started to settle. Like you got a different structure. Even if you like extra petite as a girl, like your facial structure and like started to be adult, like you got wisdom teeth coming in and shit. Like shit is different. Uh -huh. You don't look. You don't look thirteen at twenty two. I and I and I work with a bunch of twenty two year olds. I work with a bunch of nineteen year olds, and not one of them look thirteen. Not thirteen. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out. Maybe let me see this pic. What was her name? Arlisha Boykin. Let me see Arlisha. Because mm -hmm. I heard don't look thirteen. I'm gonna think that people saw that even made it. That even made her in her mind say, "You know what? This has a chance of working." Because I can't see it. It's like my brain is not computing that. Like somebody grown ass. What she thought. She she was on that equal that that woman's rights equal movement. Men can do it. You got these men pretending like they teenagers. I can do it too. No, it man, don't work. Man, it don't, don't work for the man. man. It don't work for the man. What, it don't dude, work for the man. He looking big and brolic as fuck at fucking forts. Like get the fuck out of here. Exactly. You don't well, get your big. <laughs> Yo, them dudes be looking like they are forty. Like if you don't get your ass to the YMCA where you belong, I wish your big ass would tackle myself. Run. I wish your big grown ass would tackle myself. I well, when I look at the picture that they actually have, they don't show like a blow up picture of her face or anything. But it looked like well, she looked like yeah. she about at the same height yeah. as them. Pretty much, you that's the only excuse I can need to see her face because that, like, to me as a referee. I'm looking right at her face. Like, uh, if you don't get your old ass out of it. Yeah, I need to see her. You never go by the body in clothes. Because you don't know. You know, you got baggy clothes on. You don't know what the fuck a motherfucker built like. But when you see her, I'm going to tell you what you look at on, on a woman. And I don't care who the woman is. If she do got on clothes, if she got on shorts or a skirt, look at, the, look at her legs. Like the knee joint area, or they fucking hands. Shit, he uh -huh. got a funny looking like leg area. I don't know why. It's like because they still ain't fused all the way, so it looked kind of like <coughs> maybe. Look at fluffy ass back knee. <laughs> and, and the other place is look at their jaw. Uh huh. The baby, like, unless they fat as fuck, in which case you're going to tell because 22-year-old fat look a lot different than 13-year-old fat. I don't care how big the 13-year-old is. Just do. 
even when them look them little fat boys was Hercules, Hercules, and they was bigger than grown men. They didn't look grown. Hercules, look, Hercules. Oh, yeah. Fat in the boys. So it's yeah. Bad. So I'm just saying, like, kids look like kids. Like, like let's don't don't get it twisted. I know they be like, oh man, you know, you gotta you don't know no more. But they talk about like the difference between 16 to 18. That's a closer relationship. But a 13 13 to 22, that's a big ass gap in development that just looks different. I'm talking about the most petite of women. The the most skinny boy-bodied woman at 22 don't look 13. That bitch might look 18. Maybe 17. You might be like, oh, she might be a 16-year-old. You just learned to drive. But 13? 13 got a distinct ass look. Like, they still look goofy as fuck. Kids, they look as they kids. Still, like, awkward and shit. They don't walk right in shoes. Mm. Like, they just move funny. Like, a 13-year-old basketball player. Watch a girl, 13-year-old basketball player, and watch a grown-ass woman at 22 playing ball. Their bodies move different. Like, you got a different agility. You've been walking longer. You you got more better balance. In a movement, it's more authority. In the yeah, movement. you know you know where you're going with the ball. You done did this a million times. You, you've seen this happen. Like, it's different. And I don't care who, what you are, man, woman, dog. Like, 13 look different than 22. You ain't about to tell me that old bitch thought she was going out there like, oh, this going to work, y'all. Oh, get your hard face ass. Mod. Don't get your mod face ass. Sit down somewhere. Go coach the goddamn game. Pick up that damn clipboard. That's why they lost. Hope they lost. <laughs> Got their ass whooped. I hate when people do little dumb shit like this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it because it gives no topics for good and fun. And the funny part is, as a former coach, <laughs> hold on, excuse me. <laughs> almost <laughs> all right as a former coach almost every coach to set on the sideline especially if you've played the sport like if you've played the sport and you know like oh i could do that shit you've thought about you have a player out or they injured or somebody get hurt or they can't make the game you've thought about man i should go put me on a jersey but then the second adult thought you have is if I don't Dude, sit my old 20-year-old ass down. Like, I remember me and Chewy being fucking 18, 19, fucking coaching kids and thinking like, God damn it, baby Shaq can't make the game. Man, Chewy, go put your jersey on, man. Shave your whole face. <laughs> and then we laughed about it and set our old ass on the sideline at 18 and 19 and realized, oh, we don't look 13 no more. We don't look fucking 12. The shit don't work no more. We are grown. Plus, so that's like a six foot five. I get that we tried it. Crazy as a bed bug. Crazy. That shit crazy. But who is these adults that she was around that made her feel comfortable in the mirror? Like, some other bad crazy. Well, I was going to do crazy. She won't even smart enough to get the goddamn parents of the little girl that she was impersonating on board. So they would at least back her story with her dumb ass. The parents are driving her ass out. I heard what you read. Alicia told me. Alicia, what's her name? Mary Weather. Boy. What the fuck? Alicia. Alicia, Alicia Boy. I wonder if she went to my two. Was, was, was fired for a person named. <laughs> she was fired for impersonating this girl that was out of town at a ba- at a club basketball game. The girl's parents said that mean the girl's parents snitched on you, bitch. You ain't even had a support. What kind of coach are you? <laughs> I had coaches that would have. I had, I had parents that would have rolled through the wall for me. Like, go ahead, go ahead, coach. You got it. You got it, coach Tiz. You got this. Whatever you need to do. Here go his jersey. You borrowed that for the weekend. We got his AAU jersey over here. You go ahead and play in this one for the week for the school. But this bitch ain't even had a pair. Get the fuck out of here, man. Well, um, to explain this a bit further, um, 
It is. And I hope a seven foot little <laughs> girl on her ass. I hope a new bold daughter came out of nowhere and just dunked on her ass and put coochie lips all in her head. She is from the same hometown as me, Missy Elliott, me, and more importantly, me. So I, I, I kind of understand because we're a little wacky out there. <laughs> yeah, More than a little. Paul's Face. a little different. See, Face could talk shit because he got a lot of crazies from all of his places of origin. But, you know, for Petersburg, all the crazy we really got that's famous is fucking Trey Song. And you know he on that Cosby shit. So I'm about to go pet poops outside of. Unless you've either seen or been punched by him, you don't. You ain't on no pet poop. Local goddamn lick. (laughs) Day that is still the most gangster person that I've ever seen, and he and I never saw him like do any shooting or anything like that. But just the fact that he would walk up to anybody and you could be like the hardest criminal, a little kid, a grandma, uh, a one arm veteran. Like he didn't care who you were, male, female, dog, cat, rat. Like he would randomly just walk up to people and just punch the shit out of them in the stomach. Like, I mean, hard, like a whole roundhouse right. Like. And, it, and you never knew why. Like, it was no argument before. It was like nobody owed Papoose money or nothing. He just, a little angry little man, just a wa- little midget walking around just punching old folk. And yeah, I called him a midget because when you go around punching old folk, damn it, you ain't little, no little person. You ain't got no issues or nothing. You just mean. Just a mean-ass motherfucker. Mean-ass midget. You got the nerve to be named out the Wolverine. goddamn... A little pouch you keep kids in. You a whole ass dick grown man punching on folks. People giving you passes because you little. I always said, me and my mama always said, nigga punch me, I'm going to cut the little motherfucker. Be the last nigga you punch. Right there. Not to be confused. I I just knew, like, nigga, I be goddamn. Like, I didn't let kids in my classroom punch on me, so I'll be goddamn if this little nigga that's my height, you ain't about to hit me. Now, as a four, five year old, I used to look at that nigga with a little like, oh, that nigga crazy. What the fuck is going on? Mommy, what's that? Why, why that? Why, why he doing that? Mommy, why he got a, why he got a little body but a man face? What's going on? I, I'm scared. And he's hitting me. Why he hit him, mommy? Why he hit him? By eight years old, I started looking at the guy that. Papoos, I'll beat the shit out of you. I, hey, hey, champ. I don't mean no harm, but I'm going to die today. We're going to have to go all out. Be the Not to be confused about rapper Papoos. Uh, hey, what you mean, little that, man, for no reason? Yeah, that, that to be confused by the rapper Papoos that married Remy Ma. No, not this the, not the, no. the full, yeah. not the full height. He's a regular size human. This yeah. man had the face of a man, but the body of a toddler and would punch on people. He was, not a, he was not a weak little person. Like he was deep, like he was kind of strong. Like he had like little prison muscles. But he was little. Yeah, <laughs> like a little cabbage patch. Speaking of split, the, I, I didn't rap around the rapper Papoose. He had some. Oh yeah, he was like uh, the head of hip hop for Team He was the what? He uh, is this um, app like TuneCore? It's kind of like SoundCloud or shit like that. Um, actually, I think it's like a. I think it's a little bit more than that. But he is announced as the head of hip hop there, as in he he's head of anything that's hip hop that goes through TuneCore. Pretty much. Oh. Um. Oh, okay. I was thinking totally different. Or something like Toon Core. No, Toon Core. It is Toon Core. Okay, I was like, don't give me no all brand shit if you you do on some Soldier Boy shit where you got the brand ambassador and you done announced some $400 million merger and ain't shit going on, but (laughs) (laughs) that nigga just to do a commercial. <laughs> Fuck out of here! You on the- You do it. You know you're sitting at home anyway. Come on down, get your degree. <laughs> Fuck out of here, nigga. Get you a get you a get you a deal. Come on, sing you a song. 
Everybody's streaming these days. Side. Side. He's in the street. Uh, uh, uh. Boy, boy, boy. Um, I don't got no segue for this. Uh, so China got this uh spy balloon that's flight flying over America. Man, hold this up. Shit. Can I ask a question? I know where they're not flying over. All right. This, all right, all right, hold on. Let me let me make sure I ain't tripping. Oh, shit. I think it's okay. Go ahead. No, you good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah, uh, my apologies. Yeah, there's a, a spy balloon, surveillance balloon from China, and it's crossed over balloon. American airspace. Hmm? That's what they're calling it. it it's shaped and like we a won't balloon. I won't even shoot it down. Like Huh? Uh, they, they're debating. They're, that's the that's the big question right now. Is like why that. are they not doing anything? Huh? That shit filled with poison gas, and if you shoot that bitch up, all the gas can go in the air. It's no. It's it's the matter of well, they are saying that Money. if they shoot it, it might be a declaration of war. No, yeah. no, it ain't gonna be no but declaration. It, of war. That no, your declaration when you came in my fucking airspace. <laughs> Yeah, when you go like, into any country's airspace, they have a right to if they feel like it's something is a threat to either ask you to move it or remove it from their airspace by any means. That's their, like that's part of that treaty. Like you don't send shit into other people's airspace without getting it cleared. So if it came over here and we didn't clear it, we can shoot it down, and that's not a declaration of war. So that's bullshit. What it is is we owe China a lot of fucking money, so we not gonna fuck with China. They can make COVID. They can do whatever they want to do, and we're gonna sit our little happy asses over here and whistle Yankee Doody with our Yankee Doodle with our thumb up our ass and not say a goddamn thing to them because we know that if we do, Daddy China gonna start pulling in them goddamn sanctions and pulling in them war bonds that we owe their ass, and they gonna we're gonna be looking stupid and we can't pay that shit. That's true. We have overextended ourselves. We are the, we are the classic. A uh, college student that comes home with credit card and student loan debt. America will pull some old party gangster shit. Daddy, I they wish take out the master card. I wish you would say something to Chase Bank. <laughs> they know they garnish the fuck out of your chat. <clears throat> fuck and put your head. <laughs> U.S. U.S. already sitting there ducking calls from the bill collectors. Them niggas be blocking more numbers than <laughs> screening phone calls. Oh, who, who they call? man. Oh, that's that China area code. Don't pick that shit up. <laughs> Second eight month before, them niggas be fuck that. I'm not getting none of this shit. Hey, don't call me. I don't know. I don't know. No, I blame Lee. America so in debt, they gonna start putting shit in China and um Canada name. Right, <laughs> right. Well, you know, Canada ain't gonna do shit. Be like, hey man, why you doing that to us? Hey, come on, hey. They gonna send Wolverine, y'all fucking around. Oh no, I guess we gotta go ahead and. But you know what? Canada getting more gangster over the years. Drake yeah. got them feeling like sick shit and some real, some real shit. Like them niggas starting. <laughs> they getting more crime up there and shit. So I don't know. In a couple of years, we might not be able to just fuck over Canada either. They might be like, hey, you thought it, you thought we were just ginger ale, eh? Oh, what no. you got to They getting more gangsters. So they gangster is still in their, in its infancy. America's gangster is old. We we, we, we veterans that they gangster shit. Young gangsters oh, is, are more violent, though. Canada is more dangerous to America than any other country, and this is why. Canada has terrain and temperatures and weather very similar to many parts of Russia, right? Can we agree on that or disagree? First of all, we can agree. We can definitely agree. Now, if you look at the history of European combat or just world combat in general, Russia has been one of the hardest places to get conquest over. Russia has been fucked over by itself in the Russian Revolution. Ru Russia has hurt itself, but there has not been many, if any, <clears throat> countries that have been able to overtake Russia, mainly because of Russia's harsh terrain and its weather. 
that makes it hard for other people to like do any real land attacks and all that, right? All right. What so the you fuck want we want a big wide open space, which is very much like that. We can't bomb Canada because a lot of Canada, especially their more populated areas, are very close to America. So the the exactly. type of cutoff is actually in America. Shit. Ooh, with that way they border run. Would be kind of uh, sketchy. Canada got more land than us technically, so they can they got more space where they can get the fuck on. They can literally take over one of our whole <laughs> states if they want to. Our largest state, they can just invade that shit and be like, all right, this us. Alaska. Yeah. And it really ain't shit that they're gonna do. And if they take over Alaska, now you got connections to the DARPA. You got you got you you can fuck with our weather. You can you can fuck with a lot of shit. And again, we can't do but so many different types of offensive against Canada because of their close proximity to a lot of our people. So uh -huh. then you face more backlash. It ain't like them in, like Mexico is a little bit easier because a lot of their more populated cities are actually further away from our border. Like they're more centralized near like where the Gulf is and like near uh what's the what's that ancient uh Aztec? I'm good at pronouncing shit, but that's that one that always fucks over. Tectalatuan. The place where they more from, but they ain't actually call it that in the movie. They more down there. So you got to go across some water to get to that part, kind of. You can go across land, but it's a long journey. Like Canada. You fuck around and fuck with Toronto, nigga. You're going to have some people in upstate New York, Maine, New Hampshire. You're going to have some people up th that part of the country that's like, hey, 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 we getting debris and stuff over. Hey, what you doing, America? Hey. And we, don't we ain't like going to get our drinks off. And those places are, a lot of those places are Midwest or northern red states. So oh, you're not going to get us to fuck with Canada. Canada is very dangerous. And a land offense, they got so much fucking land to deal with. It's like they can evacuate and go into parts that, like, nigga, they got ice road truckers that be, they got roads that will eat up whole fucking trucks. Like, just take an 18 wheel and just swallow that bit. Go in the water. Mm -hmm. You ain't about to come over there with too much crazy shit. You want to get rid of them for real, you need to really bomb the fuck out of them, but you do that again, you're going to fuck us up. So I, I think Canada is a very dangerous, eh? Yeah, they we got more than <clears throat> Too much shit close to us, pretty much. Um, matter of fact, that leads very We are considered a world power, but we're not in a very uh, advantageous position these days in the world. Like, there's a lot of countries that have, like, either a little bit more political pull worldwide or they have like military advantages that we don't really have an honest answer for. It's kind of just like because we're kind of we like that uh, I tell you who we are. We are Creed Apollo Creed and Rocky. Which one is it when he fight the Russian? Is that four or is that three? Four. All right, so uh, we are Apollo Creed and Rocket Four. Like, we we <clears throat> live and really off name only at this point. Like, we really don't have like we really a diminished form of ourselves. We we kind of old. We not really swinging the big the biggest guns. Other people have caught up to us now, but people still think that we the the, the bully on the block because of our name. But we just waiting for the right Drago to come along and be like, if he dies, he dies. And knock the knock us right on into oblivion. We just waiting on it. Like we just gonna piss off the right one. We're gonna have Trump again <clears> as <throat> president. We're gonna say the wrong shit and fuck us all over. So I don't know. I know America got some shit that the people don't know nothing about because all they know is war at the end of the day. America is nothing but war, and we've been in war since war was war. So at the end of the day, they get they gonna get at the end of the day, if they gotta sacrifice motherfuckers, we all know they will, and they would. So, I'm gonna tell you this for the greater for the greater good. They're willing to lose lives for the for the for the winning of the war. No, nah, they are willing to. They were willing to. 
they were. You got to realize where America is now. If we if we talk in 1940s America, oh, Canada, China, everybody else, better shit your ass the fuck down. Hey, let's Nagasaki these motherfuckers. Truman would have Truman would have nuked all this shit. Ah, eh, fuck it. It'll be me and 15 of my friends. <laughs> I think the only reason he was didn't we sensitive as fuck. We ain't about to nuke nobody. We ain't about to send I no feel, real. We we let Russia do what the fuck they want to do over there in Europe because we scared. Because we we don't want to piss off the wrong people politically or or fit the wrong group or look like we did. Like we so busy second guessing other people are less like they still on that old school World War Two shit. Like, hey man, I don't like these niggas. I want to go fuck with them. All right, let's get the tanks, y'all. I feel like I feel like the only reason they dropped on Nagasaki is because they didn't know the extent of the damage that was going to happen. No, sometimes. I said Nagasaki for a reason. I knew you was going to say that. You got to remember, Nagasaki was the second bomb. Um, they hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You got to remember, it was two bombs there. We we didn't nuke just one mother. We was like boom. Nagasaki won't even know what we're talking. These niggas think we playing. Boom again, bitch. We don't give a fuck. What's Let this another man. major city? What's the other major city over there? It's another major city. It's start with a T or something. Tokyo. Tokyo. Nah, not Tokyo. It's it's a it's another major major city, but it ain't Tokyo. It was one of them. It was somebody back then. It was one of their favorite vacation spots. That was the original target, but being it was his vacation spot, they chose to go with Nagasaki and, and bomb Nagasaki instead of the original target. I forgot the I forgot the politician name. I mean, I forgot the actual place over their name, but that's how they changed it to Nagasaki and end up being Nagasaki instead of the other motherfucking place. Only one I see is Tokyo that starts with a T. The only other one I see is Kyoto. It may not, it may not, it, makes my point strong. They might have changed the name. You can't get the place we want. Hey, bomb that other shit. Get that other no, what's his name? Kyoto or some shit like that? Kyoto. Kyoto. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Well, that yeah, is a big I'm to me. It's fine. That's that's Tokyo it. Tokyo. It makes sense. <clears throat> we didn't that was give a fuck. Vacation spot oh, back then, yeah. so he was like, "Do the other one, not this one." And they got Nagasaki. What happened after that, though? Like you gotta, re like you gotta look at all this shit. This geopolitical, like we are, we got soft after that. We got scared. People looked at us crazy as fuck. And instead of us saying, "Look, we will do that shit again," now y'all chill the fuck out. We said, "Okay, we'll just build up a lot." And then what happened was other people got them shits too. And that's the difference between us. We know that we ain't ready to do it again. Hey. Iran, Saudi Arabia, them little Middle East countries that's, that be getting their hands on shit, Palestine, uh, Pakistan, they'll let that shit fly. North Korea. They can't wait. China, Russia, they will let that shit fly. And that's the problem. We got a bunch of gangster ass countries, and America is like the, the kid in class is trying to mediate, but you ain't in a class with other kids that's normal. You in a you're in the higher learning class. You in the uh we need a white yeah, like these motherfuckers. You in the uh the the what's the movie with Michelle? Where all the kids were just delinquents and, and looked like they were 72. That was the another case, like, old as fuck, and you in this damn high school, bitch. I don't believe you. <laughs> you look, huh? The breakfast Just most alive. That dangerous mind. Yeah. Okay. Like you, you, that, I had to get I, Coolio had to bring it back. Rest in peace, Coolio. But um, damn, like that's that the life. type of class you in, and you the kid that's trying to. Be hey guys, come on, let's all get together. What you doing? Don't do that no more. We've been there. We've been there. And the other kids are like yeah, you. In fact, I it. You were in front of the class. I'm like, come on, guys, let's listen to the teacher. Let's give him a chance. Nigga, no, shut up. You better be ready to knuckle up, bitch. Like this shit get real out here. Like, 
countries are not playing with America no more because they realize, like, this is the thing about weaponry, yo. It's like everything else. You had Rome, right? When they first came out with their uh that phalanx shit and, and the way that they they the way that they used the phalanx with the mixture of cavalry and all that shit, right? It was revolutionary at the time. So they ran shit for years, right? Uh-huh. And then all of these little barbaric countries from around them started realizing, oh, well, we can do this, and that negates that shit. Mm-hmm. So now what, nigga? And Rome slowly but slow, slowly got picked the fuck apart. We are Rome. We, like, uh, all empires come to an end. We just don't realize our empire coming to an end because we so damn cocky. We don't prepare for that. We still, like, it's a reason we still spending billions of dollars on airplane models that don't work. We spend billions of dollars on a fighter jet that has never worked. I can't remember what it's an F something. It's one of them Fs. It's not the F sixteen, the F eighteen, the F the F nineteen. It's one of them Fs. You, but the shit never really worked, and we still spend billions of dollars on it every year just to make that same boot busted ass fucking plane that we're not gonna use. Because we more concerned about the looks of shit, the numbers of shit, and making money than we are with like actual substance. Of, like, uh, we about to get fucked up. Yeah, that is America. <clears throat> that is America. <laughs> this nigga over here weak. This nigga like the devil. Enough. What now? I don't know what he said. <laughs> nah, he, 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 he was doing he was good like when F12, you were trying to the, the flatter jack or whatever. You were like, F this, F, F that. And he was like, F you in the background because he was hiding. <laughs> shit. Well, fuck you too, nigga. Shit. They need to be like, fuck that flatter jack, but. Uh, <laughs> but, Fuck um, that Flapper Jacks. What's that? Fighter, you know, like fighter, pancake? Fighter oh, the fighter I was like, what? Flapper Jacks. I thought was I'm, like that. <laughs> I'm hungry as fuck. I'm about to eat me some breakfast after this. No, shit. Yeah, I just well, you know what? started recording. I was eating this shit. No, I'm like, I'm about oh. to eat. Like, I'm about to eat like some potatoes, some uh, bacon, and some sausage, like, like six boiled eggs. Some toast, like I'm about to fuck. I'm about to fuck the fu- the food up. I'm about to fuck this fridge up. I'm about to hurry up and get past this. One. No, you can't, bro. Because uh, I really want to get to this other point. Uh, the well, Massachusetts. Y'all heard about this? Massachusetts is lowering sentences if uh if the prisoner is a uh, organ donor. Basically, I did not know that. Yeah, they just put that out. Oh, that's good to know. So uh-huh. if I do come to Massachusetts, I'm gonna give me some time off because I am an organ donor. Yeah, that works. Okay, so question I'm, for that. I'll be representing since I got my first ID, my first now, little state ID. Me. Now, being that one would think, okay, a lot of presidents are gonna sign up to be organ donors, but is there any stipulation that you have to be in good health? I'm pretty sure you got. I'm pretty sure it's the same that? stipulation. I'm pretty sure it's the same stipulations anytime or whatever. Because I mean, you could be like you 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 put that on your license. Like that's one of those things you could file as a, a organ donor and a long time ago, and then still be that or whatever. But I don't know. There's, I they just yeah. released. This. They don't care about your health because, like, depending on what you die of, you got something that they can use. They might use your eyes. Yeah. They might use the, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like with the organs. They feel like it's something salvageable in there. They treat you like a, a, a old car or something like, uh, yeah, the engine and transmission like, fucked up, but get them axles and go ahead, get them brakes. They work. Or they could be offering that to a lot of motherfuckers that's in, that's in locked up with like terminal shit. It's time to be organ donors, cut the time down, get out, just be able to spend your last moments with your family and shit, pass and then get your organ. So that'd be some good ass shit for those people like that. Probably terminal can't see your family, can't spend no time. You gotta end up dying behind bars anyway. 
And yeah, um, cool. it could be they could donate those organs for science reasons or some shit. Be studied and shit like yeah. that. That's the only. Mm -hmm. All right. So my yeah. last topic, right? Put the guy from some Frankenstein prison moth. <laughs> Give me my commas, man! Let's stick it here. Um, y'all heard of that uh movie, You People, with um? Give me my commas, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy and the dude from Superbad. This nigga is silly. Yes, yo, him and uh, yeah. Joe. All right, Lauren London. And can I just say this? Lauren London mm -hmm. has has brought some extra things since uh, Nipsey Hussle died. Something's different. Moving on. I understand. I understand. BB, all right. Um, <laughs> well, I watched the movie. The movie was funny. Uh, it was, it cool. was a good movie. Yeah. Have y'all heard what Corey Holcomb said about it? I have not, but <laughs> I'm very excited to hear it. Um, um, he basically said it still got black people as the bad guy because Eddie Murphy is a, is a jerk and an asshole and he terrorizes um, old boy throughout the whole movie or whatever but the undertones of it it still has black people as the big bad wolf throughout of it and watching the movie I can't really say that's not Damn. Um, uh, I will say this: you it it could be some pareidolia there, like some uh, you know, movie pareidolia where you you see you looking for it, so you see it. But I will also say mm -hmm. I can't argue against it based off of the movie. Like it does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's the, I. I'm just a white guy that loves hip hop, man. I just you know I. I'm sorry. You know, I'm blah blah blah, and this, then the third, and then you know, Eddie yeah. Murphy is being the stereotypical angry black man, uh, angry black man with a little bit of Muslim influence on it. No, a whole lot of Muslim influence no, on it. I was actually shocked that they actually had a movie where it was a, a Muslim main character in it. Mm. <laughs> to be God honest with you, oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not, but not it, nowadays. It, it, it's, it's almost like the irony of it is like they joke on the like tone deafness of like how white people can be or whatever. And at the same time, it's still kind of tone deaf. <laughs> it's, it's still fucking tone deaf as shit. Damn. I'll be honest. I hadn't pull it, took it to that thought process. I'll be honest. I just kind of looked at it at face value and just enjoyed the movie. Like, but if you put it in those perspectives, like it. It makes like, a lot of like, you. You ain't lying. When I when I Shit. was watching it, I was like, I'm not even. I'm not Muslim. I'm not Islamic at all. But I've had I, over the years. I've had Muslim and Islamic friends, and a lot of my favorite artists are Muslim in in in, in general. But I felt kind of offended. Almost, it was like it was something in the. It was like something in my subconscious that was like something about this doesn't feel right. Like, this is funny, but I almost felt like Eddie Murphy was being a caricature because he's not. Is he Muslim? I don't know. I don't know what these celebrities are. They're yeah. Illuminati. <laughs> 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 but I don't know. I just, I just wanted to put that out there and see if y'all heard of that, uh, what he said and, and see if I'm like, am I off for like kind of agreeing with him? Cause I don't think really, so. This might be the week of agreeing with uh <laughs> some uh controversial topic, but I, I definitely do see the point. Like I hadn't again, I hadn't looked at it like that, but as you're saying it, and I'm thinking back on certain scenes in the movie and just the overall tone of Eddie Murphy's character, it wasn't a very positive light shed on him. Like, even if you're coming from the aspect of being a protective father. He was still very um, aggressive, mm -hmm. but I guess my see that's the thing. 
it wouldn't have been bad if it had been toward a black man toward a black man. The fact that it's a black man toward a white man made it look bad. Mm-hmm. You put that toward a black man, it's just meet the fuckers. The reason it looks yeah, so pretty- bad is the black, like, what they should have probably done is had the white woman be a little more, be the one that was like more aggressive and be had a black person be more like tone deaf and, and had that, think, that dynamic flip so uh-huh. that you're making the black person look like they're the aggressor in the situation. You're making them look more like they're just aloof, which uh-huh. is an easier pill to follow than, okay, we're the angry people again. The actor probably didn't want to be aggressive because or whatever. Cause then I don't know. I it felt like the movie was made to like quell the troubles between black people and that community. But at the same time, when they do shit like that in Hollywood, it always come out tone deaf. And I mean, I ain't gonna lie, it was a funny movie because um Eddie Murphy don't make well, he made some corny movies, but you get a laugh out of him. And old dude, every right. movie that I've seen him in is hilarious to me. Or whatever. Like, I, I don't have no problems with him or whatever. But all in all, it still seemed like it's kind of toned up. But that was it. That was it. That was my last topic for the fuckery. But. Well, I definitely uh understand the tone deafness. Um I, I want to look back at it and kind of re-review it based on that perspective now, but I definitely do understand why Cora Holcomb would say that. Like, I, I get that perspective. It did kind of paint us as, like, being, oh, we're angry, rah, 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 fuck everybody else. Oh, why y'all don't want to just do a weed? Like, so, yeah, I get it. Definitely get that shit. Yeah, I <clears throat> I almost wonder if it's a, if they will be able to make it a comedy any other way though. What you mean? Just to give them that, you know, that I I I, I can't see a calm black person being hilarious. Well, no, I take that back. I'm not gonna down the ability of my own people. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. No. But I'm done. <laughs> from the fuckery to fake shit. So, I figured this week we talk about all things fake, man. It's a lot of fake shit, fake people, and fake asses, and fake asses. It's about a bunch of fake shit. So, That's all fake ass fake. Hey. <laughs> At the post office. BBL! Yes, that's one of the one. What's, that's one of the one things I want to do. I talk about the rise in the, the 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 necessity or the feel of the necessity for females to have a fake ass or go out and pay money to have a fake ass and have surgery to enhance your ass. Like, is it, it, it is it that serious? Is, is it that serious nowadays? Like, are you competing? Is it an external or internal competition? That, that this is serving the purpose for because you, you really can't be doing it for men that, to that much because most majority of the women who give these BBL surgeries, um, when you garner the attention that the the surgeries um get you, a lot of them how can I say um from what I see respond negatively to the to the majority of the attention they get from these enhancements um. Just in, enjoy and embrace your own natural beauty, what God gifted you with, and just learn to accept yourself. Um, hate to go back to a former episode, but we spoke on acceptance at one point in time. So the necessity to have these surgeries, to have these fake enhancements and just go around fake and impose that sh- the real you, no. Nah. Because at the end of the day, okay, if a man is attracted to you for your body and it's a fake body, and you have work done to your face, and that's a fake part of your face. But that's what he's seeing, and he wants to invest in you and have a family with you, thinking, okay, I could possibly see my children looking like that. No, your kids ain't going to look nothing like that, because that ain't what she looked like. <laughs> that's all fake. It's a facade. 
So you're setting yourself up for failure, and you're setting your papa made up for failure. It ain't possible family because don't nobody know what these kids gonna look like because you don't forget what you look like with all the enhancements. I think yeah. it's a, uh, I think it's a, it, it was a different self self esteem somewhere that led to the the, the sudden rise and the need or the the the, the feel for necessity of these BBLs and all these sudden and surgical enhancements. Because at one point in time, it was a rarity. Not everybody was getting them. It was only the, the few select celebrities and everything like this. But now you got your regular common day, everyday person running to get this cosmetic surgery for what? what? What What's the look you're going for? But then you also have these people who go out of their, out of their minds with this shit and just look ridiculous like cartoon characters. Like, <laughs> then you have people who walk around looking like ants because your ass is so big and your legs are so small, you didn't get them proportionate. Like, you look like a car- I, I, I don't get it. I'm picking up a baby bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not getting it. Another fake thing, man. The, 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 these fake lives that people live on social media. And, and people, other people going on and getting influenced by these fake lives and trying to influence their real lives by these facade lives they're seeing other people lead on social media. Realize people, social media is a place you go to to embellish and exaggerate your, your real life. That's what the majority of people do on there. These Photoshop pictures, not many people take random pictures like, wow, that's me. Whatever blemishes, I'm going to put it up there. They have all these filters and, fo- and all this shit for a reason. You, you're not getting the reality and the real person when you're seeing these majority of these pictures and these videos and shit. People are touching them up. People are editing them. Getting them real tight. You won't see the arrows and the flaws. The arrows and the flaws make the real person. Without that, once again, it, it, it's a facade. It's fake. No, Don't no subscribe problem. to the fake shit. But here it go, though. Watch this problem. The problem with the, all right, so it, it's it's oh man, it's a multi pronged thing. So I'm gonna start with the BBL shit, the 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 body enhancements, the lip enhancements, all that shit. I feel like that starts with that's our fault. Eyelashes. I'm a, I'm gonna say this. That's that's men's fault, and I mean a specific a specific group of men. That I'm a part of that came up in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s because we, in our music and our everyday goings and comings, we praise women with nice shapes or the fat ass. I still do. We had the fat ass. We didn't really mean it had to be gigantic. We more meant that based on your body type and proportionately, it looked good. So, which is why you got the BBLs now that's like more making women like. At least proportional, but it's like it's giving little bitty women that little that little butt that they didn't have before that we actually like. But that's the thing, though. It it's our fault because we said we like it, and what happened was men forget the power we got sometimes. So specifically on the BBL thing, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the broader issue in general, but on the BBL shit, on the body image shit. A lot of that comes from just like the men now getting their body sculpted and shit is because women are more fucking with niggas that's got a decent body. Oh, and now, I didn't that part yet. You got fetishes and shit, but you got a lot of niggas now online and shit that's getting enhancements to make muscles or getting their body sculpted to make them have a six pack when they did that first. Man, 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 Ain't that that rapper dude? Right. Yep, yeah, and like man, Cabo, uh, a lot of a lot of weight, a lot of bodybuilders online, like these online bodybuilders and shit. Like a lot of them, like it, it's a it's a thing. So I think it all, for one, it starts with the men and women that came up praising these body types and only dealing with these body types, especially men on the BBL end, though, because men forget the power we got because we outnumber women. So if we do start gravitating toward a certain look it does put an abnormal pressure on the woman because at that point any woman that's not fitting the model is kind of on the outs because we have the option to find the woman that we looking for out of the 
18 to 1, 12 to 1, 7 to 1, whatever it is in your city, it's always going to be something to one. You're always going to be outnumbered damn near unless you live in some weird county that somehow or another. Yeah, I don't I don't even know some work county where everybody there coal miners or something. They all live in tent. I don't know what the fuck. But uh, <laughs> like you're always going to be outnumbered. So men are always going to hold the dating stick like men are going to decide what's the beauty standard and if men rush toward a certain beauty standard it does put pressure on women to follow that so that that started that now what you really the biggest issue is and why you didn't see this being an issue in the 80s 90s and early 2000s the biggest issue is what faith said it goes to the social media like they linked like we started the mentality that would make a woman be willing to do it and then social media took all of those insecurities that have been building up and exacerbated them shits because now through filters, through the fact that women of all over, like when men talked about the Brazilian, but you saw that on a porno, you saw that on a video or a movie or something that was shot in Brazil or you were one of the few people in the world lucky enough to actually go to Brazil. You didn't see that all day, every day on your timeline because now people from Brazil all have Instagram. They can easily, you can easily access millions of women from Brazil. Like all of the things that men have been saying that they want, they used to be just fantasies and they would be relegated to like um, soft core porn or movies or like shit that like, like, Oh, that actress looks like that, but everybody ain't gonna look like that. I can't see 15 people that look like that for real. Until social media, when there's literally 15 people in the world that look like that, and all of them are posting at the same time on Instagram. And you can see all 15 of those people that look like that. So if you don't want to look at those other 30 million people that you could be looking at, you're gonna just look at them 15. And guess what? Because them 15 getting all the attention, them other 30 million gonna be like, well, hold up, I'm over here. Hey. Hey, basic Betty over here. Oh, you like her lips? I'll show you. Get them same exact motherfucking lips. Now you got a race of women that all look the exact fucking same. They all the same color. They all the same lip size. They all the same butt size. They all the same butt size. They got the same little skinny legs. They wear the same dresses from Fashion Nova and these other little online brands. Like they all look the same. But, but it starts with that insecurity that we planted in each other and then it builds to shit like Band Man Kevo and Kim Kardashian. That's how you get starts with those things though like where women started even dating like oh I want the man that looks good with in, in swimming trunks. So all the men that didn't have that exact body started to get played at the beach. They started to get played online. And because it's online, it's always amplified because now instead of just you and the, like 10 people you know looking at it and talking shit about it, now it's like on the low end, you got maybe 30 people looking at it, talking shit about it. On the high end, you got millions. And either way, it's bigger than your normal scope. <clears throat> and now it feels like it's so bad when it's really not. You all right. Hey, y'all. Hey, people out there. You all right. Everybody all right. It's only about 3% of the population that's like extravagant and like, oh my God, you're a, you're a physical specimen. Everybody else? We different levels of I. We somewhere between three and eight. And you got your ones and twos and your nines and tens, but that ain't most people. Most people is somewhere between threes and eights. <clears throat> and when most people are there, you're gonna find your partner. So don't don't go out here and get no weird shit that make you look like a P. Don't be pushing P. I'm at least an eight point nine. Man, I'm gonna tell you what. If we rating shit, I'm a solid. This is this is what a man has to be. A man has to be at least a five in two out of the major three categories in order to survive. That means look, dick size, bank account. If you are at least a five, as far as your rating, not like the, the actual number of dollars you have in your bank account on the engine. I, I just mean like 
a five out of ten. And two of those three areas, as a man, you're going to be in the top automatically. You push yourself into the top top 30 percent of men because most men only have one or zero of those three categories that they are rated at least a five in. I would say Which is why the broke big dick nigga always gets bitches. They always, they always somehow keep seeing it land on their feet. And at the same time, like, but, but, but women think he look good. He got, he got dangling. Or the ugly nigga that can fuck the girl right and got money. He gonna always get bitches. Just go like that. Got two out of the three. You're going to be all right. You'll figure that shit out. Don't take a lot. I blame Pornhub. I blame the simple fact that the internet is a, a that was social way media. Way more accessible. Piece. Yeah, it's way more accessible. Um, just the simple fact that you don't have to go to some video store and go into the back store and show your license and everything just to get to those uh, type of girls or whatever. They come that became more accessible. Um, accessible. I can't even talk to that. But let's accessible. be real. So when we it, talk about it, porn girls, though, bro, like are we really saying that porn girls are like the upper echelon of women? No, so I'm you saying- look at porn, porn girls. <laughs> No, no, I'm hear me. I ain't, I ain't saying they ugly. I'm just saying, like, they usually follow the societal trends. Women in porn usually match the women you see in everyday life. They usually follow whatever's there. So, like, the BBL trend in porn is kind of following. That's because what everybody else looked like in real life. So that's what, you know. What I mean? I'm just saying it's more accessible because we didn't have Instagram and all that right now that amplified that look the first place you could find that look was on the internet on porn sites pretty much and being that you saw that and you have more accessibility to seeing that or whatever once the social media come around and it's now it's now a trend to have bbls and things like that or whatever it has now become marketable to the point that people are uh women are getting their body altered and then using that as a way to get sponsors and stuff like that. Now that once once that started going or whatever, it just it just amplified from there. I'm just saying that the first place, like how is it? when we had Facebook and MySpace and all that other stuff back then or whatever, like you really didn't see as much as you see now. You know what I'm saying? And that was basically the first type of Instagram, the first type of you know twitter and everything right now but it was what it, and, 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 it's what i'm saying though right by the time by the time by the time <laughs> this current trend of what we're talking about right now this barbie brats overly accentuated in certain spots super thin ways big hip <clears throat> like that look that we're talking about that mm-hmm. came about once Porn had already been out there and social media had already been out there. What I'm saying is we started this insecurity because we started chasing asses back in the early 2000s. But what happened was a woman, let, let's put it, Kim Kardashian is the catalyst of all this. Us men, yeah, yeah. us men liked Kim Kardashian at one point. Most men, if they're being real, were attracted to when they when the Kim Kardashian wave first hit, mm-hmm. that aesthetic was something that we were all talking about, and because it blew up such so much, it shifted the beauty standard. Before that, we yeah we like fat asses, but we weren't talking about this specific type of a look. It was just hey, hey well, you got a fat ass this, I was, and we didn't. It out of a white girl. This this brought a whole new. You got to think about what this brought. This brought a white girl who was thick with black girl features. Well, 
how to say two things can be true at the same time. I'm not saying what you that what I was saying is the main thing. I'm just saying that what was I'm like the build up. First, porn might have helped to exacerbate it, but porn can't couldn't have been the start because again, we got to know Kim Kardashian not necessarily all for porn sites, but like we started following her before. The, like people look at the porn tape as like the big bang, but that wasn't the big bang of Kim Kardashian. If you follow no. the shit, it was social media and people following Paris Hilton. And we kept seeing Kim Kardashian with this bitch. Like, who is this little exotic looking bitch in the back? Who is this girl? And that built up to over a year or two. Now we get the Ray J tape and that's like the end piece. But it started on like social media sites. These little media sites, if you want to call them. Maybe not media sites of people seeing it. Like, who is this looking bitch? And niggas like lusting after that. And then when the porn th and we finally got to see her naked, that exacerbated it. But it started. Well, it started her specific her specific um porn that started it. I'm just saying like there was other porn stars that had those type of bodies, so people got used to that. And then with Kim Kardashian coming out or whatever, that solidified that look because it made it popular and trendy. And and just the simple fact that her look is what people say when they go get these plastic surgeries. Like that's a like like it's a like part of the menu or whatever. Kim Kardashian. Matter of fact, uh, what is it? Because Lily from California, she was telling me that um, people from there, you don't want to get plastic surgery from there if you want to look don't want to look like everybody else because all the plastic surgeons there are basically Kim Kardashian style plastic surgeons you're going to come out looking like that in general and i've been saying this for a while like all these bitches starting to look the same and now i know why <clears throat> everybody's yeah. everybody being last. drawn by the same pencil yeah yeah <laughs> i i think it's very scary though because yeah with, i think i think it's we scary because about the lack of creativity but i think it's because everybody's trying to be the same person now like uh -huh. if you look at dudes all dudes are trying to have the basic rapper starter kit look if you look yep. at women they're all trying to have this kim kardashian uh waist trainer bbl look so all of the dudes all of the young like if you look at the younger population they're kind of seeing you seeing like the next wave of what people will look like they they all kind of look like each other like it's hard to tell some of these little niggas from each other like all right well hold on which one is you hold on what's your name the and I just say, why, you, why you coming to give me dab again oh that's not you oh you oh you okay so you larry oh that was randall okay my bad they all look like static oh, shots oh, with a record bro and and the girls all look the same. Is that Lisa or is that Teresa? Or is that, exactly. Is that, the same. It's, it's about like three Kims, Toya, Tisha. It's like Tisha. same complexion, same Rashonda. hairstyle, same face, same clothing. Like it's just it's like a bunch of doppelgangers. Same. Yeah. But it comes down to the reason that they're so fake is because like who wants to be yourself anymore? It is hard. Like people act like peer pressure ain't a thing, but it's a reason they call it pressure. It, it is a thing of humans to want to be communal and to match with and partner with the other people in their grouping. That's normal. Like, like it, that's why we had tribalism and stuff like, and that's why you saw like in animals, the like kinds want to come together. Like, okay, I want to be the same as the other wolves. I don't want to be the one wolf that got a fucked up eye because now I look weird, and then the other wolfettes don't want to mate with me, and now I, I can't make my offspring. It's like it's normal for people to feel that way, right? But the problem is, we have free will. Like, we forget that there's so many of us. If you sit still long enough, you're going to be all right. Billion. Somebody will find you in there and be like, you know what? That weird-ass white eye? Come here. I like that white eye. My eye orange. 
Still your ass. We both look crazy as fuck. Let's look crazy as fuck together. Like, why not? Be like, man, pressure on marriage. themselves. Like, but it's because they don't like themselves. Like, sometimes it's hard to sit with you. And that go back to again what Faze was talking about when we was talking about acceptance the other week. Like, a big piece of acceptance starts with like accepting yourself. Like, you got to be okay with like the fucked up shit about you. Like, you got to be okay with your flaws. You got to be okay with the shit about your face that other people may not like. And that's okay. They don't have to. Why you don't like it though? Like, okay, they don't like it. Got it. Why you don't like it though? You got to figure out that type of, you got to get down to the nitty gritty shit about yourself so you can accept yourself. And then all the other shit, you're not, you're not looking for that validation of I need to look like Kim Kardashian so that these people would notice me. you like, well, fuck it. The people that's going to notice me is the people that actually like me. The other people that ain't noticing me, I ain't going to be attracted to them anyway. They, they, they don't want me. They want something else. You know what I mean? People scared to accept that. Like, sometimes you got to really rate yourself. Like, I know why I'm at on my scale. I am a good ass 5.2. A strong ass 7.2 on my best day. And if I dress up in a tuxedo or some shit and really got my flash shit on, I can get up to an eight. <clears throat> this is what I know. I walk around, though, at a fighting weight of a good 5.2. I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. I'm just hanging around. And that's what most people are. And when people start settling to that and stop thinking they fucking tens, like when you watch them, uh, Y'all ever see them YouTube videos where the little people go around and they ask people like, what do you rate yourself? Everybody's an eight or above. You gotta be shitting me. So it ain't no four. It ain't a two in sight. Shit me, because I walk around and I look at them. I see them. I see them. I see them twos and fuse. Some of them infused with BBLs too. Because they trying to get up to that five. That BBL a 10. I don't know about the rest of them though. <laughs> man, it's the self love, man. It's the self love, man. That's, that's but, what it's doing. That's but where there's money to be made, there will be fuckery. <clears throat> Especially if the fucker makes money. And that BBL fucker is making mad money. So I don't think yes, I don't see it, it stopping. Um, I'm going to tell you. It's going to stop as soon as some some woman or something look that, that uh, it got to be a wave. It got to be some woman that catches everybody and then a bunch of dudes start getting on it. But it can't look like that. It got to be some exotic way to come from somewhere else. It'll happen, though. You know, you have your, your times like in the 80s. They had, they had that. What was it? The uh, the heroin chic where the, where the girls was like really, really, really skinny and look, look kind of like sunken in almost. <laughs> that was the look. So you had to have you a, a, a little waif looking chick like that. Like, you know, like they have these different waves of like these. That's how them niggas start banging them cracking heads, huh? You know, what I mean, I remember back, what they said back in the old 1800s or something. You had a phase where women were like, it was like the 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 fat woman or the the woman that looked like she had been eating good because it showed like she wasn't starving. Like, so I think like you know, the, it depends on just you know, it it going waves. It, this should wear off. It's been a long time for us because we watched it from the beginning, but it ain't really been a long time in the scope of history. So you know. People will get tired of that shit. And then the uh, next thing. Well, oh, I think it's calming down. I, it's small. I think it's calming down because the natural look is real popular also right now or whatever. But I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, I believe it should go. It's like Brandon playing. Like, I still got people out there going for double Ds, even though ain't nobody checking for no big ass titties and I can't see your face. But you got people uh, going for it. You know what I mean? But it's not like uh, it's it's not old, looking, like, you're looking good with that girl. You know what I'm saying? 
it, it it had its moment, the Pamela Anderson time when when everybody was going after the Pamela Anderson Carmen Electra look. It had its little moment. It, it had its phase. People did it. Some people still doing it, and they look crazy as fuck. And that's how them BBLs will look like. Oh, you still doing the little ankles, big booty thing? All right, right on. Skankles. Yeah, you know, yeah. And that, look like two olives well, on a stupid. Well, I was going to say about the live on social media in general or whatever is that I don't think I don't think you can actually look on anybody's social media and like really see their life in general like like uh, like if they just showing pictures of themselves and stuff like that because nobody's going to take pictures of bad times you know what I'm saying unless they have a post where they try to be inspirational or some shit like that or whatever, or they try to go viral in some type of way. Nobody's really ever going to like show a moment where they're at their weakest or looking the most bad or just that in the third. Even if they are or doing a top like that, it's still, it's still got its own filters, even if it's filterless, if you get what I mean. Like it's still scripted. It's not, it's not an actual street fight. It's a WWE fight or whatever. But that's, that's how I feel about it. So fake shit. But, yeah, but that that's what this grabs for is just like the show, like the moments and stuff that makes you amused, pretty much. I totally agree. I I I I always put it like this in my head: when it comes to social media posts, it's impossible for you to capture a real moment if you have to actually stop the moment to get cognizant of something else to capture it. Like, even taking pictures growing up, I always hated that. Like, I like to take a picture after the event or before the event or whatever. But, like, once we're doing something, like, let's live in the moment. Because once you stop the moment, now we're missing. It's a piece of that magic gone immediately. Because now whatever it is that was actually making us have this emotion and this memory that we were going to share is now being stopped and jolted and disjointed to stop and pose three times for the picture, find the right filter, make sure the lighting right. No, let's come stand over here, really, though, because now, like, it's too much. Like, people who are living real life usually don't have a very entertaining social media unless somebody else is running their social media where they have, like, a cameraman or a vlogger or something that does their shit for them where they are followed. Because then they're able to just kind of be in the moment and, and be, just be recorded. But if you out here, man, you ain't about to tell me you stopped to take a selfie in the middle of this shit and you still feel the exact same way that you did right before you did. Like, you done lost it. So now whatever we getting is the fabricated version of what you actually was trying to do. And you're going to put some extra shit on it. You don't want to look bad because you're scared of the comments that's going to say, oh, look, your skin look crazy. Oh, why he got a bump right there? Oh, why? Is a little dry. Oh, he got a little crust in the corner of his mouth. Oh, he got a like mm-hmm. nigga. Mm-hmm. People have boogers. People have crust in their eyes. Sometimes you be talking to little white shit getting your corners in your mouth. Sometimes you got cotton mouth. You done smoked you a blunt. Your mouth white. Like shit happens. Sometimes you got a little a little speck of something in your hair from your hoodie that you done took off, and you got a little piece of lint. Like life happens. You ain't gonna be perfect. Look like you, so when people pull up on you in real life, they ain't shocked like a motherfucker. Like, what the fuck? Who is that? No, you ain't you. No, that ain't you. Face mask syndrome. That ain't you. Who is you? Who the fuck is that right there? That is not you. That ain't who I'm looking at right here on IG. That let me scroll down. Put you your mask back up. No, this right here said no makeup. That can't be you. Make up my ass. That shit rubbed off on your shirt, and my shirt, oh, like and everybody else shirt you walked out. Who is this? Who this? New face. Who this? Bitch, uh, you had to put your face on and everybody else's face too. And I'm talking about of all ilks, whether it be male, female, celebrity, or regular people. I have seen all ilks where I see you in real life, and I'm like, oh, what? Who? Hell no. That ain't you. You don't look like that. It ain't no way in the world you tell me the same person I'm looking at right here. 
You cannot tell me that. Uh, and the crazy uh, thing uh, is, I don't understand it because I walk around every day looking exactly like you would see me in person. I don't even know how to use filters. Well, they're not really built for us guys to really like. If you look at like, oh niggas be using them, bro. Mm-hmm. They they be, you ain't never seen no crater face nigga. Niggas skin always be smooth as a baby's ass on fucking IG, and then you see that nigga be like, man, nigga, I know that piece of face ass nigga. That nigga don't look like that. <laughs> nah, don't, nah, I, like, I don't use them if I'm trying to do something like creative. Fuck out of here. Like I use That's it my for cousin, y'all. That nigga don't look like that. I'm telling y'all, that nigga got had razor bumps since he was 13. His face is not that color. That is a a, a Helvet, Helvetica. That is a Helvetica four filter. That is a. <laughs> with a with a special but, angle he don't you know, from some from some bad bitch on Instagram. Like like how say I'll use them if I'm trying to make content mm-hmm. or there's like some type of special effect that I saw and it'll make the like content look good or whatever. But Thank really you. if you look at how the filters are put up there, they look like a makeup box. It look like I don't know. That I get that makeup box feel when I go through all well, the fil- filters. And filter stuff. That I feel like it was built like Kim Kardashian, no matter what. That will make a nigga have the same feature. Because I that it would feature you know, showing that shit. It is because most of these these filters are catered to women and not catered to us at all or whatever. Then you may <laughs> have like some shit that like all right, you got one that has flames around you or lightning around you. That's that's the, so we can have so many of our brethren love that shit. <clears throat> You know and saying? when I so, say I don't mean that they really attracted to it like, oh, I want to marry that woman, but they like it enough to want to keep fucking with it. They're, they will holler at that before the other woman, which makes that shit keep being the popular shit. Like I said, well, they're going to take it like a Zoe Kravitz or something to come out of nowhere and be like built completely different and then dudes be like, all right, huh, let's go back down to regular body. Well, that's because the the men that they after are all after a trophy wife. So pretty much as to what you were saying, you know, being being around. Um, Lily had me around. I, I think. Am I breaking up? My Internet just looked weird for a second. But. Yeah, I I see that that's that's what they go after. They go for the trophy wife to show off. Probably for business, some business reasons, but there's a lot of vain reasons in that in in general, or, or whatever. I see them actually go for it <laughs> themselves. So, yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's a trend. I mean, I don't know. I, I tell you the funniest part about it, though. The coolest niggas that I see don't ever have a woman that look like that trend. Uh-huh. No, no. Nope. They always have some woman that be like, regular as hell, be like, oh, all right. Why are you? All right. But yeah, they selling an image to the people, so the people will get mentally brainwashed with this bullshit the whole time. They don't want this shit. Just yeah. the sales. Once so again, fake. Oh, um, can I ask y'all a question? Uh huh. All right, this ain't serious at all. All right, great. Due to the amount of time that we already running there for this episode. Are y'all down to meet up tomorrow at some point or Sunday to discuss my topic as like a standalone conversation? Sunday yeah. would probably be better because and tomorrow I got to come up with one episode. Yep. Sunday. Bet it up. I'm cool with Sunday then. Y'all just let me know what time. That works. All right. All right. I'll edit this part out. Appreciate it.
right. Cool. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Fake shit. Not on no fake shit, but on some real shit. Y'all got any black businesses this week? Um, I got one because um, look, I got, I'm gonna be running the club tomorrow, so and we need to make money. So if y'all want to come by to Cali Nights, uh, two five five Trinity Ave, uh, yeah, you might see me there. Hey you man, how much the hookers, man? all over the place though? <clears throat> how much the hookers? Hookers? Oh, I gotta check with the hookah lady. I think they're like, I think they're like twenty. Like 10. Yeah, I'm trying to come smoke some hookah, man. What's the cover charge? You good. You're free and How much enjoy. is parking? Huh? How much is parking? Um, just let me know when you pull up, man. And I'll tell you to park where to park. Because you park one across the street, and they try to charge you. But if you park where I park at, I just say you work there. If anything. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever ch- check that parking anyway. Better than, I mean, I ain't worried about nobody stealing my shit. I mean, you know. No, nah, I ain't gonna be nothing like that or whatever. Yeah, but these I'm bums a, be trying to be creative and try to get people to pay what's them the to park. You know what, sweatpants or shit? Is it? Can yeah, I wear sweat? I be wearing shit. I be wearing the same exact shit. I don't know how many times I wore this shit, man. What would you want? Okay, great. Because I, I was planning <laughs> on wearing sweat. Because uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm. I'm yeah. Shit, sweatpants. That's because I be working. Tennis shoes. Yeah. I be wearing. Athlete. Athlete. Be wearing your gray sweatpants outside the house, man. No, sir. No gray sweatpants, but I do wear sweatpants. I mean, it don't matter the color of my sweatpants. Motherfuckers know. I might be running around all over the place, but I'll be there. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, no. I'm trying to come get this hookah, man. Mm -hmm. I have been in the mood for a hookah for the like the past three weeks and been like, okay, when am I coming? When am I gonna go get over there? Go, go get to this uh spot. So uh, I think I'm gonna pull up on you tomorrow night, man. Just let me know. Yeah. Let me know. I may be running, but let me know. Oh, you fine, man. I'm just gonna let you know I'm pulling up so I can you know <laughs> I'm gonna find me a spot for the hookah and I'm gonna sit the hookah down and then I'm gonna just sit there and smoke this hookah. Smoke with a hookah, yeah. Like, I, I'm really, I'm really about to unwind like a motherfucker with this hookah. Like, if in this hookah, about to have a spiritual experience, Paul. Uh. Yeah, it's just uh. crazy, but I don't mean it in a crazy way. Like, I just mean, like, you want to really enjoy it. Looking forward to it. <laughs> anyway, almost made it through the whole episode. Yeah, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna finish the rest of this conversation about the hookah offline because the next sentence I was gonna ask is just gonna sound crazy. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, Pod Squad, god damn. Um, yeah, so basically, we up out this bitch, and uh, you want to give us money. You know, dollar sign partner tears one and shit, or go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners and you know, send us money or become a monthly subscriber on uh, Spotify for $4.99 and give us money there. Or you can give us money and we can give you something back. How they do that, face? Go to the damn stove. Our stove. Our track clothing.com. Our track clothing. Dot com. A R T R E clothing dot com. And no, I won't spell clothing for you. Never will, never will. You got it once, gotta rewind to find it. It's way back there. Yeah. But um yeah, after you've done that and you gave us some money, or you giving us money and we gave you something back, talk to us. How they do that, Pat? At sign T H E P O D N A S. That's at sign T H E P O D N A S. And that is the Instagram. That's the Twitter. That's the Twitch. That's the TikTok and Facebook. It's Tiz Face Pat are the podcast. 
You see the partners? You see the partners up top? You just say the partners. Just, just type that in somewhere. We'll and we got the information down low on the bottom. It'll be there. And uh, hey y'all, as always. This little bit is going honey. <laughs> you might have some fake niggas in your life, but you can always count on us real niggas, the partners. And there's always I've been one third of the partners. Boy Tears, and I've been along with. It's the Padawan here. I'm on that gray goose and alcohol. Gray goose and alcohol. It's your boy Curse in the place, your one and only. We're going to finish the race. Fuck it. Don't know what place, but we finished this motherfucker. I bet Thank it you for got me $20. <clears throat> as long as you came up, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to spend it on Lotto and then go to the casino. We on that and I he got a chicken sandwich he can call. He don't know what he would do without y'all. And neither do we. See y'all next week, bitches. We been the partners. These shit's about to come out real fast in order. So you probably gonna catch this episode probably within a couple of days of 113. Excuse me for the delay, y'all. I been going through a lot of shit. Y'all just pray. And keep watching that. Join the conversation, bitch. Peace, motherfuckers! And we Put are my watch on. out there. Just in case y'all won't. This is the end of the fucking podcast, bitch.